Thank you very much. Again, um, uh, I think um, we all learn uh, from the caliber of the speakers that we have today. We, uh, we all have so much to learn today and, and take notes and take away. So I encourage everyone once again to, um, to uh, try to pay as much attention as possible to the caliber of the speakers that we have. Now, a very important um, point was raised by uh, Dr. Qadri is that um, marketing and design, uh, particularly in, uh, in sort of uh, corporate social responsibility side, but also in terms of marketing and design of, of products. Um, we all know how important it is um, in broadcasting the intended uh, purpose and the objective of an, a project or a, an industry. So from project to industry. Now, ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker is a pioneer in, a, in, the, in this field, in the field of brand and design. And he's going to share his perspective on halal branding uh, and Islamic uh, economy. Mr. Peter Gould is a designer, creative entrepreneur, and an artist. He has established a successful international strategic firm, uh, branding firm in Sydney and Dubai. He has worked with a wide spectrum of clients um, from global icons, uh, such as United Nations, uh, governments, embassies, Etihad Airways, Thomson Reuters, uh, to household brands. He has won several uh, international awards, including Islamic Arts Award 2015 by the Prime Minister of the United Arab em Emirates. Mr. Gould is described by the BBC as among those, urban, those young urban global Muslims leading the emergence of a new Muslim cool. How cool is that? His innovative and award-winning work is highly sought after and it, is, it has touched millions with positive, inspirational, creative projects. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Peter Gold. Assalamu okay. alaikum. So the, the session before lunch is uh, always a tough act and uh, I'll, I'll be doing it succinctly and uh, inshallah I'll uh, not have too many images of food but we'll get there. Um, I uh, just want to say thanks to the organizers for uh, gathering us all together. Um, I think it's a great effort to get such a diverse mix of people and it's a real blessing to be asked to attend and contribute and learn, um, especially for example from Dr. Hussain there, that was really uh, very insightful, so thank you. Bismillah. Friends, we live in a world where we can walk down the street to Coles and we'll find 40,000 brands on the shelf. 40,000 brands, we can just wander around them. And we never question that because we're just so used to it, right? But is that crazy or what? 40,000 brands of food and we have our preferences and our favorites. And uh, we've just grown up with that. We've become accustomed to that. Brands are what we experience. And, and every day there are six to 8,000 messages on the way here or on your smartphones or, or some form of communication. You'll get six to 8,000 messages a day that will hit you. It's an incredible, there's one of them right there. <laughs> We live in a world where 25,000 products are launched at us every year, every single year. It's always increasing. Uh, if you're like me, uh, an early adopter, um, you would know that in the top, top corner there is uh, the Tesla Model 3. 115,000 people committed and put money down on this car before they had even seen it, let alone actually being built and driven. And this was last week. Did anyone see that launch? Or was I the only one up in Nike? Oh, Elon Musk, you know, entrepreneurial legend, right? There you go. Okay, so there's an earlier doctor. Um, so that's the power of a brand. That's the promise. So these people, 115,000 people, were like, yep, I'm lining up to buy it. Don't know what it is. I know it's going to cost $50,000, but here's $1,000, take it. Um, within a week, which as of like yesterday, $10 billion of pre-sales for this car. That's the power of a brand promise, right? It's more than the product because they'd never touched or felt or seen the product. Incredible, right? And here are some other examples of, of brands that we come to know. So they're not always products or definitely not always technology. Um, they're, uh, you know, they're individuals, personal brands. Influ they're very influential. And they, we, we don't often stop to question the psychology behind them, the system behind them. And uh, there's a lot that we, uh, we need to learn as a global community about the power of these brands. 
Every day we have relationships with many of these brands up here. You would recognize all of them. I mean, everyone in this room would have a feeling about one of these brands. You know, uh, when I teach a branding workshop and I point to the example of the panda bear, I say, oh, that's a, that's a logo for a panda bear shop, right? They sell panda bears or what? And they're like, no, it's the you know, Wildlife Federation. People know that and they have a feeling about that. So that logo becomes the gateway to that whole brand experience. What I want to do just initially is share a little bit about, okay, do we understand that? Because many of us don't take the time to actually think about and analyze the system behind how a brand works. And it's important for all of us in this room to, to do that, but encourage others to do the same. You know, It's kind of uh, crazy that we live in a world where we're so defined by the brands we engage with, what we wear, what we buy, the decisions we, we make, um, the, you know, the people, you know, that, that if, we, if we just think about those messages that we see every day, so, quick example, interactive workshop. Okay, um, how many people want the water on the left more? Hands up. No one's deciding. Hands on the right? You don't really care, right? It's just a glass of water. It's the same product, right? You, if you tasted both, you wouldn't know. What about now? Okay, same water, different package. How many people want the wine on the left? How many people prefer the one on the right? Okay, yeah, because you're smart, right? Smart water, <laughs> smart person. You know, and you walk around holding it, and it's like, oh, it's a smart guy. <laughs> Maybe not, but it's, it's a, this is a, sim just a simple example, okay, that the packaging around that unlocks this set of feelings about, oh, that must be, it looks a little cooler, it's designed that way. It's, it's, a, it's the same product, right? It's, it's, it's really, it's, more, it's the same thing. If you put the two, if you go back here, it's just water, okay? <laughs> but... You know, one has, a, they both have whole industry behind them. Now, if you had to choose just two, and sorry, just one, and you had, you had to put your money down, you go ahead, it doesn't matter to the company that owns it, which is Coca-Cola, they own both brands, okay? One is designed to look cheap, one is designed to look expensive, okay? It's positioning. What we need to understand, very simple, the heart of branding is positioning. So, up here you see Coca-Cola owning both of those two, and many, many other examples, okay? It's a very simple corporate, this is the way positioning works. Um, over on the far side, in that green box, I've also highlighted another, like to me, majorly hypocritical example of, um, and, and, and scandalous how brands work like this. So many people are familiar with that sort of Dove beauty, um, you know, empowering women kind of feel that they create through this uh, Dove brand, right? But they also own Lynx and Axe, which is this highly sexist, you know, completely objective, objectifying women in their same, um, you know, same communication. It's the same company that owns them up the top. It's the same type of product, you know, personal hygiene, but one is positioned and branded in a certain way to a certain audience and same with the other. Okay, it's just understanding that these brands are playing with us every day, you know. And same with fashion. Or oh, you might might be more of a, uh, you know, I'm more of an Yves Saint Laurent person or or a Ralph Lauren person. Same company owns them, right? But they're just positioned differently. This is branding. So I just want us to get us into that mindset of understanding those. So <laughs> your logo is not your brand. Okay, that's the biggest takeaway that we often mistake when people come and say, Oh, I need a logo for my. Okay, the brand is not that. The brand is your feeling about something. Okay, when people pre-ordered those Tesla cars, well, ten billion dollars of them worth have now been sold. It wasn't because it had a cool logo. It was that feeling they had inside. Oh, this is cool. I'm going to be early adopter. This is great tech. I'm, you know, I'm really excited about it. It's the feeling. Okay, so your logo is not your brand. It's the gateway to the brand. Okay, and this is just for us thinking. Those who own brands and organizations is understanding that is absolutely key. Okay, and design itself is going much deeper. When people traditionally, you know, years ago, a design was about a logo, your website, your, your brochure, oh, that's thinking about, oh, I need a designer to help me with that. Well, that's fine at a very superficial level, but design is much deeper now. Understanding the brands that embrace design, like uh, Google or Sony or Tesla or Uber, uh, take Uber, okay? They are a design-driven company because they've designed the entire service. Okay, it's the entire experience that integrates the physical world, the app experience, the software, you know, it, it, the whole service has been designed. And so you, experienced designers and service designers are really the, the, the brands that embrace those are the ones that are succeeding massively. Okay, so, so I think when I start talking about the, you know, Islamic economy in the Muslim context, we have yet to really uh, embrace this. It, we're, we're barely struggling with the 10-year-old the version of understanding it. I'll just talk briefly about okay, understanding this global context that we're in now. 
and alhamdulillah this has been my journey in the last last sort of five ten years is, is seeing the, the growth of these types of uh, events and activities so you'll see these kind of figures being put around at certain events um, I think a leading one the global Islamic economy summit they'll talk about um, you know the growth the opportunities the population so there's some basic numbers there and and uh, what that means is you're, you're, you're having this shift away, you know, this, the focus on uh, design and entrepreneurship away from just, you know, the, the basics of food and finance. You know, halal, halal lifestyle products are really this new generation of, um, you, know, you know, sort of more, um, more, uh, wholesome, more holistic in, in the, the spectrum of what's possible. So we're definitely seeing that in tourism, but we're also seeing um, that much more in fashion. Um, we're seeing, many of you are, are you know, involved in this in different levels. This is where I'm seeing a lot of exciting growth is, um, you know, people looking at that influence, how, how their faith influences many of the, the buying choices and Muslims growing up in a world with the Ubers and the Teslas, expecting that more that speak to their values as well. So some of the types of events that I've been attending and uh, experiencing and observing are things like the Global Islamic Economy Summit that's in, been in Dubai the last three years. Um, the World Islamic Economic Forum, uh, now in its 12th year, and, you know, for example, the American Muslim Consumer Convention, I think in its fifth or, s yeah, fifth or sixth year. And what they're embracing and talking about a lot more now is not so much the technicalities of halal and the, the basic building blocks, but more about these lifestyle, halal lifestyle types of products and, and opportunities. It's talking about innovation, uh, a lot on entrepreneurship. So you'll find startup events, you'll find lots of founders and competitions, pitch competitions. These things are really happening and they're very exciting. Um, and you know, you see uh, some, the whole spectrum of awesome brands starting to, to kick off globally in little pockets, um, but also you know, internationally. If you want to know more about those kinds of things, I've left a bunch of these on uh, your, your table. So in the middle of your table, you can grab one of those. Okay, let's think about brands in the Islamic economy. So. When I became Muslim about 13 years ago, as a, I was a designer, I was running a little graphic design freelance shop, um, I became interested in lots of things and, and it didn't take too long to, for me to realize that, hey, where are all the cool Muslim brands? Like, aren't we like a quarter of the world's population? Where are all the, <laughs> you know, brands that have come from Muslim majority countries and places and communities? And consistently in the last 10 years, in all of the top 100 brand indexes such as the Future Brand in Index, um, big consulting firms that do these kinds of things, McKinsey or whatever, they'll list all these top brands, influential brands. None of them are, have you know, Muslim founders or from Muslim majority um, countries. And it really bothered me because I, I was traveling and seeing this beautiful creative heritage that we have, that we've had for centuries. So it was really disappointing that we hadn't had those. So I was like, okay, well, what do you do? Let's bismillah. We talked about change earlier today. Let's try and change that. <laughs> so, um, and and uh, this links back to the, uh, the the last talk as well. Is um, you know uh, these these corporations are uh, you know they they have their own you know they have their own agendas and you know definitely CSR might be tacked on at the end for some of these. It's not the core of what they're about. So I worked on Humble in the last five ten years. More Muslim centric brands that are you know driven at that deeper sense of purpose. Um, they are created um, in the context of, you know, inspired by our faith. And some of them are Muslim focused and other ones are more um, kind of mainstream, but they have that influence which makes the brand very deep and very, I think very powerful. So just some examples that Hamza, my team and I have worked on. Um, so for example, brand like Hadith of the Day uh, now has um, I think 13 million users daily. Um, and design is very clearly a part of the strategy there. Uh, Five Pillars is a board game we helped develop that's now sold uh, 90, I think 95,000 copies, uh, mostly in the Middle East, also uh, Southeast Asia. And it's a design-driven experience, it's a creative experience. It's taking timeless religious content but making it into a very contemporary, fun type of experience for families. And you'll notice when people when people started coming to our studio and, and they were trying to articulate, oh, we want it to look modern, you know, but we want it to look Islamic. So these are the typical types of things people ask our, our team. And I, I first start by saying, okay, well, we have, to, we have to put aside that notion of that Islamic means has a crescent, is green, has this mosaic tiling on it, has a piece of Arabic calligraphy. Those things might come into design, but this design is, is, has, is a completely fresh type of visual uh, expression. Um, 
but is, is inspired by all of the, uh, the faith in the same way. So don't, don't go resort to using these uh, cliches if you're uh, creating brands. Uh, Humbler, we work with people like Sam Youssef and doing album covers, he's a musician. Uh, brands like Noor Vitamins, who are distributed all across North America. Um, they were one of, I think, fairly early pioneers in, uh, in the space. Uh, and, and the brief there was have a, a package and a presentation that you know, competes uh, on the, the Walgreens shelves. You can have it at Walmart. It's, it's as compelling as a purchase, the packaging, the presentation, as any other mainstream brand. Hijab is one of our clients in Indonesia. They have, um, Humbla, in the last year, they've had two rounds of Silicon Valley investment, and I think they have, um, I think there are over 100 staff now. They're growing really well. They're an online fashion platform, and they're growing regionally and internationally. So I think these are one of the first sort of, I would call, Muslim-centric lifestyle brands that have had two rounds of external funding from the Silicon Valley non-Muslim investors. So just think about that. So these are, um, you know, the communities of these really wealthy tech guys who have, you know, have been you know, big venture capital funds. They're like, hmm, where, where are the most exciting opportunities? And some of them end up going, oh, let's go Indonesia and invest in a halal-centric fashion platform. Very exciting, very interesting. And I don't think they really care about the whole halal ethos. Um, they care about making money because <laughs> they're VC funds. Uh, so we care about both. So you know, we've, got, uh, we've, got to, we've got to do both. Just very briefly, some other the brand, people and brands we work with, like Yasmin Mujahed, Zaytuno College in the US. Um, this is a kids' audiobook brand from the UK that I enjoyed working with. Uh, Halal Food Festival is a client in London, and again, we wanted to opt away from using uh, very sort of expected and cliched types of designs and communication. So we use more humor in our in our campaigns. So you can't see much, but you know, there's a Shakespeare a parody there. So Shakespeare is a fictional play on Shakespeare, Much Ado About None, and we have these big London bus ads that we sent through. So just being more playful and, and uh, looking to the way the other mainstream brands work, we, can, we should also adopt being more creative in our campaigns. <coughs> Tab Genius is a Singapore-based uh, product that's all about um, helping kids learn about Quran and Islamic concepts, and it's like a little device that you can um, pick up and tap, and it'll read, help you read. Uh, we do a bunch of work for Thomson Reuters, who are the key, um, the, the key channel that delivers the Global Islamic Economy Summit every year, uh, which I recommend attending. It's a really interesting melting pot, sort of like this on a, a quite a grand scale. Very interesting things happening there. Uh, Islamic Museum in Melbourne, which is truly awesome, creative experience. If you haven't been there before, definitely go and check it out. And it's, it's literally you walk into this beautifully designed building and it's, you feel something. Okay, so it's, a, it's as a brand, I would talk about just the visual design of it, but the experience you have is very powerful. People then talk about it, spread the word. So great example of using design you know, in, in desperately needed times to fix misunderstandings. Another, um, uh, this is a museum um, exhibition experience we designed for the powerhouse. Halal Gems is a UK-based uh, digital magazine. And locally here in Australia, we do some projects too. This is one we did for uh, NZF last year. Okay, so there's plenty more of that type of thinking and a bit of data in these that I've left on your desk. Um, I just want to talk briefly about okay, understanding <coughs> design and using then design coming from the heart. So this is where I think many of us in this room, we have passion about a particular area or issue. So we've created a business or we're working in an organization that we really deeply care about. And it's, we're driven by our faith and our values. And hopefully it can have a really good sustainable business model as well. But coming, so these are some of the projects that Humble I, I created or have kicked off uh, myself and my team. So when my kids came around, I was very unhappy with the, the quality of Islamic kids' apps and experiences. And if you have kids, you know uh, it's very hard to keep them off uh, tablets and iPhones for too long. As soon as they get one, they're going to be exploring whatever cool games you've got. So why not make cool, cool games for cool Muslim kids? So Humble, I've got four out in the market, and um, they're doing pretty well. And so these types of creative experiences are important. NurQuest is a cool one where you know, you're in a mosque in space and uh, the Quran's going to be missing. You've got to go collect it. And uh, the kids love it. Uh, I've, I've worked with some different fashion companies. And when I was learning Arabic, I was like, the language like alef ba, alef ba smiley face. Like, you know, that t is a smiley face. So just using the creative things within our, uh, within our language even and just being more playful with that. 
Uma Legends is a weekly uh, series we, we uh, share through social media, st stories of uh, great uh, Sahaba and Awliya and, uh, and um, Ulema from the centuries past. Hijabis is a fun uh, kids brand that kicked off as well. Creative Uma is a, pl is a platform that we built for basically putting the spotlight on all these cool entrepreneurs and makers and, and creative people um, around the global Muslim community from Indonesia to Istanbul, you know, Sydney to, um, you know, to Saudi, basically we're seeing all of these cool things happening. So we wanted to give them a platform. Muslim Gift Guide um, is, a, is a directory of all of those cool things. So there are so many small companies that are popping up that are making cool products and really, you know, understanding this importance for what makes a great brand and they're Muslim focused, so we created uh, that directory, which is going really well. It's, it's called MuslimGiftGuide.com. And then, of course, we had to do the kids' version because that's really a whole world of uh, expectation and need there. So MuslimKidsGuide.com is uh, all the cool Muslim kids' brands, experiences, videos, books, and so on. And just some other creative, fun projects that where design can remind you of something deeper. So this is just a fun project I did with a friend. Uh, we all know that word is iqra, and uh, it's a simple design, a functional bookshelf, but it reminds you of something much deeper. It connects you, your spirituality, inspiring your creativity. So I love that as a simple example of, you know, design has and always will be a tool for reminding you of something deeper. You know, it's not just about selling more sneaker, uh, sneakers and sodas and cars. We have something incredible, and our faith can really inspire our creativity. We have to do that. I've, I really believe we, uh, we haven't embraced that. Um, fully as a community. And all these cool things that we're doing, a problem became that there's so many cool things that uh, you know, people were, weren't, weren't able to keep up with all the <laughs> different things going on, not just us, but hundreds of other communities uh, and makers and entrepreneurs. So we created a simple app called Muslimi, and you can download for free. Um, I feel like a salesman, but you can get it free on your, uh, on your iPhone or whatever. And basically, it's a daily <laughs> curated guide to all these cool cool stuff happening around the Ummah products, entrepreneurs, brands, articles, quotes, inspiration. And uh, lastly, I'm going to just leave. Uh, this is a project that <laughs> very dear to me that in the last year I've started um, kicking off. And it's really about capturing the need for imagination, design, and uh, creative thinking uh, and in creating a sense of optimism that are needed in our, in our young people. I think we've got a real... Uh, desperate sense of, you know, there's a lot of ugliness in the world. I want to disrupt that with these types of creative projects, creative thinking. And, uh, you know, even for example, um, you know, we're losing, you know, literally a lot of the heritage is being destroyed and lots of terrible things are happening using our technology and our imagination to rebuild, recreate some of those experiences. So one of those is uh, through the Museum of the Future in Dubai. Um, all the, the temples that were knocked down by the the idiots in um, in uh, Syria, they, they actually capture, recaptured those and, and reprinted them in 3D, in full size. So the ruins that were destroyed have now been 3D printed and now are on exhibition in London, and they're going to put them back there where they were destroyed. I think that's a great use of design imagination to, uh, to um, you know, it sends a strong statement for positivity. Anyway, lots of cool things coming up on the horizon, lots of cool, positive, disruptive, interesting technology that we have to embrace. Let's create the madrasas of the future. Um, let's think about our future living spaces, what we can do together there. You know, lots of little ideas that we should be doing uh, and thinking about. Um, these are just some of the pieces in there. When I uh, got my hands on Google Glass, I thought, well, that's cool. That'll help with Quran. So I put the whole Quran on Google Glass so you can easily do kind of like a heads up display, you know, that kind of gives you your eye by eye thing. So let's use this technology, our optimism, creativity, imagination. Um, really, we've got so much we can do there, inshallah. And I also want to design a space mosque. Um, I think that'll be fun. <laughs> and, uh, but if not to actually you know, focus on space, it's just the, the process. It's inspiring people to think about, we can do things like this. We can do incredibly cool, inspiring projects. And there is so much talent and great people in this Ummah. And if we can just mobilize some of that together, and many of the people in this room, I think will be a key part of that, inshallah. Thank you so much.
Talk Indonesia just been awarded as a how best tourist destination in honeymoons and yeah. I think it's a really cool product to sell. But I just wanted to know whether we are going to fine tune the word of how tourism or it just go, going to be just a trend. Yeah. Thank you, thank you very much. No, no problem. Well, yeah, halal tourism, there's so much buzz in that space. There are a lot of things happening. We have an interesting sort of sometimes, humble like a, uh, we get a, a sort of, a, we're, as if we're on a mountain, sometimes looking down on the industry because a lot of people come to us asking, hey, I'm launching this brand or our tourism board is doing this. And so what that means is that we sometimes have a few months insight into what's, what's coming. And, uh, you know, definitely there's so much happening in that space. And I think that's going to be a massive area of growth. Uh, there's definitely going to be um, a lot of conversations and things that will need to be around um, what that means to different people. Uh, I also think that I got asked the other day, like, how will virtual reality influence halal tourism? I got, <laughs> I got asked that question. And it's interesting because in virtual reality, you know, especially the latest generation, um, you can have very, like, very dramatic emotional experiences using this technology. So you could give people a real sense of what to expect. Um, and, you know, I think for Muslims that, that can create some interesting opportunities. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I could speak for a long time about it, but uh, I know everyone's got to eat, so. <coughs> Your presentation inspired me a lot because most of the people uh, never really know about the differentiation between the so-called branding and logo. Mm -hmm. That's why I should like to ask your your ideas and view on on, on this particular point. Mm -hmm. And if you can elaborate more, yeah. it should be very very helpful for us to understand. Yeah. And to go deep into the importance of of uh, Islamic <coughs> arts, Islamic uh, design, mm -hmm. or even you mentioned about three D. Three dimensions of uh, exhibition at the moment, because in Thailand we are very, very interested in uh, producing that type of exhibition to in order to uh, to get more young generation to come into the so-called Islamic economy as such. Yeah. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, sure. Thank you. I'm I mean, there's a s several sort of points I can jump off in there, but if I take them just briefly, uh, understanding the difference between that your logo is not your brand, it's the gateway to your brand. And, you know, it sounds like, a, you know, for many people it's a trivial kind of thing, and that's, that's fine. Um, I guess the essence there is don't just think of design as something you do at the end of the process where you just, as if you had produced something and you just stick a label on it and say, oh, that's the design for it. That's a very old school way of thinking about it, and really brands now from the outset, the ones that really understand what feeling they want to create through this brand, this experience, that, that becomes the essence of it. I mean, you know, examples with technology and iPhones and so on are, are you know, obvious kind of ones that people don't buy because it it's got a really nice box. <laughs> Although that's part of the brand experience and even the way you open the package, even the way you experience it, you know, we talk about a breakable brand. Breakable brand is something that wherever you see it, whatever piece of that brand, you know where it relates to. So Apple being a great example, if you were just walking home now and you happen to see a little tiny corner of a white box that's been pulled off and you saw a tiny little gray eye, just even a little eye, lowercase, you know exactly what that brand is by its identity and it would give you a feeling. And for a lot of people, it's sort of about design, innovation, they think even Steve Jobs, and there's a lot of sort of feelings there. And then for other people, it's like, oh man, I'm not, I hate Apple, I'm definitely a Samsung guy. But you define yourself by what kind of brand you follow and so on. There's a lot of psychology there. Um, and then very briefly, I mean, there, yeah, there's lots of other parts of that conversation, but I think a key thing is understanding that this type of innovation and creativity and design is no longer this sort of external activity. Brands and organizations that bring design and have strategic design as part of them from the outset, whatever they do, even if they're, you know, like a small goods kind of provider or they're, you know, traditional type of um, companies that, you know, selling packaged goods, having design built into the strategy is uh, absolutely essential for, for success. And in the Islamic economy, in Muslim-centric uh, opportunities and halal lifestyle marketplace, massive opportunity to, to do much better and uh, absolutely, you know, create some exciting brands 
and uh, inshallah we'll be part of that journey for the next few years. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you so much.